Hello, I'm Father Dan Barker, um, a retired priest of the diocese, and I'm glad to be your uh, host priest for the next three weeks. The Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse, us, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together and say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may restore, that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today is found in the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them home from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come and with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they do not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has, re re has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion. They shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in a dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. A sparrow has found her a house and a swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, where the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. 
For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God, than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Our New Testament lesson today is found from, in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 6, and 15 through 19. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every blessing, spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable goodness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. <clears throat> After the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I, until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophets. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sorry, it's hard for the noise. <clears throat> this second Sunday, Christmas, is not one we usually have. We usually get one Sunday and then it's off to Epiphany. But I love the scriptures for this, this week because they are so full of the promise and the joy of God. Um, it's worth remembering uh, or reminding ourselves that the Old Testament, uh, as an old saying goes, that the, uh, the grace of God is in the Old Testament concealed and in the New Testament revealed, that is, with the coming of Jesus Christ. And it's important to remember that because too often uh, theologians, some priests, uh, other people devalue the Old Testament when they say the gospel is where the truth of Christianity lies. And of course, it certainly does lie in the gospel. However, it was, it was Jesus on the road to Emmaus who went to the trouble of teaching his disciples uh, everywhere in the Old Testament, the, old, the Hebrew scriptures, if you will, uh, that pointed to him. And we read that they were filled with joy and they wanted him to stay. And it was only when they broke bread together that they recognized that it was in fact Jesus that had told them. And so if he told uh, his disciples all the important things in the Old Testament that pointed to him, 
well, it seems to me that we would do well to pay attention. This passage this in Jeremiah, now Jeremiah has a reputation of, of being uh, a gloom and doom guy. We talk about Jeremiah as being a uh, woe is us. He wrote the book of Lamentations as he wept over Jerusalem and its imminent destruction. But in the middle of this book, and there's other places in there as well, he's looking at what God has promised to his people. Now, again, one more thing I want to remind you is that we are, by virtue of our relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, Israelites, we are part of God's chosen people. We are the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. We are adopted into God's kingdom and have the right to call Jesus our brother. Now, it's good to remember, of course, that he's also the Lord of the universe. So we have a little bit of perspective. He's like a very older brother. But you get the idea. So all of a sudden in Jeremiah, he's, he, he's already prophesied that the Israelite nation, the Jews, the Jews, the tribe of Judah in particular, was going to go into captivity and Jerusalem was going to be destroyed and they were going to be out of the land. And here's a promise that says, God isn't going to forget you, that God is going to bring you back and he's going to bring you back with joy. Now, he did too. There was a fulfillment of this prophecy when the people came back from Babylon, but it wasn't a fulfillment of prophecy where the people came in from all over the world, from the coastlands, as it says, which is in the in scripture talk, that's the rest of the world. Uh, but it's looking forward to the time when the Messiah returns, when Jesus returns. It also points out as we go along, it says, with weeping, they shall come. Uh, there's sadness in the world. There surely is. Uh, life is tough. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit too. But, uh, but the fact is that at the end of that time, this history that we're in, uh, comes a time when Messiah is going to come and restore everything. And there will be joy and the, the imagery in the passage of the flocks and the oil and the wine our, our suit is very much to an agrarian society because they took joy in those things. And most of us are distanced from that unless we happen to keep chickens in the backyard or do some things like that. Most of us get all of our food and everything else down at the grocery store. Um, but the time's going to come. Scripture tells us that we indeed are going to be redeemed by God and receive his consolations for all the hard and tough times that we've had. Um, now, what I want to do is actually shift gears. I don't usually preach two homilies in one, but it's worthwhile taking that idea about joy and about what God is going to give us and look at our present situation. Here we are still in this COVID crisis um pandemic uh, here we are most of us sort of chomping at the bit to get out and get our lives back to normal so that we can actually come to church and see other people and uh come and, and have fellowship and worship and receive communion and do all the things that we love to do and so we come to this psalm 84 and it says how dear to me is your dwelling O lord of hosts my soul has a desire and a longing for the courts of the lord and I was just saying to my wife, Margaret, this last week, I really want to go to church. Now, um, I, I really do, but I also really realize that this COVID-19 stuff is still here and is still real. And uh, even though some churches in the area are worshiping together uh, and our bishop has seen fit, I think, with some wisdom to restrain us for the time being, especially with this advent of a new new COVID strain that is more is more um, transmittable than the other one, uh, to continue to be careful for the last while until the vaccine comes. Now, we're going to look at our news every day and say, how soon is it coming? And I'm old enough so that I'm hoping I'll get it sooner than some, some of the people, even though maybe that's not fair, that still is what's within me. So things are tough, you know, the, you know, all the experts say that mental illness is up, suicide is up, and there's all sorts of bad things going on, not just in our country, but all over the world because of this COVID thing. And yet we have this wonderful, wonderful song that, that says, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Now I wanna again, make a distinction between happiness and joy. 
I'm not very happy about the way things are. Indeed, I'd say I'm not happy at all, uh, except that we count our blessings every day for the fact that nobody in our family that we know of has been exposed to the COVID uh, vaccine um, uh, virus to the point of getting it. Uh, and we thank God for that. And we thank God for our own well-being and for all the provisions that have been made for our material needs. Many other people much less fortunate than I. And so we thank God for that. Yet at the same time, as I look at the life of us and the world around us, it's not too great. Uh, and I really wanted that to be over, but that's a happiness thing. The joy is in knowing the Lord. The joy is in understanding and believing that he's going to restore the whole, the whole, whole shooting match one of these days, that justice will be done, that we will indeed enter our eternal reward as redeemed and restored servants of God, made more completely in his image. And boy, that's something to be rejoicing about, even in the midst of this stuff. And so this is a good news Sunday. I don't have any great wisdom on how to live your life better or any of that kind of stuff, but just look at the scriptures, enjoy what they have to say, and believe that God will do what he says he'll do, which is just to bring us to himself with rejoicing, with his consolations. Amen. Let us turn now, if you're using your prayer book, and I'm using mine, even though I know the creed by heart, and affirm my faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people are form four. If you have a prayer book, page 388. The response to each prayer, after I say, Lord, in your mercy, you will say, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all our reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant, grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. And this concludes the service for this Sunday.